Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, David's channel on Series 3 Land Rovers. Uh, I want to show you what a tuned 2.6 sounds like and give you a quick rundown before people come around. We're here at uh, Switherland Lake, Switherland Reservoir, which is a lovely place. It's beautiful here. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it used to be the old Leicester City Waterworks. Basically still a water source for the, the city and surrounding areas. And I come out here to test the car every time I need to do a tune-up or something. So that's what we're doing today with... We still have to give this thing a name. Um, and I don't know what to call it. So if you guys have any ideas... My daughter says Gabrielle Ursula or something funny. And this is basically it. This is a 2.6. It's actually an ex patch just like me. Um, it's from South Africa and it's been brought back here for more work. And it works indeed. I use it <clears throat> pretty much every weekend for garden and shop stuff, packing, loading, carrying all the time. Plus the kids get to have a bit of fun in it as well. Um, this car takes a Lucas system, ignition system. We always start with ignition because ignition is always the most problematic. <clears throat> you may have noticed that I've actually replaced the coil with a dry resin type coil, which is a VCS MB, metallic black, Viper coil. It's very useful. <clears throat> and I'm going to treat the car to some nice fresh leads as well. Uh, the distributor is a Lucas type D25 something or other, but it's a six, not a four. So always bear that in mind every time you choose uh, parts for like the, say, the rotor, the rotor arm. They're very problematic. They tend to, to fail, especially the ones with the rivets in them. Uh, I'll show you what happened to me this week. The rotor uh, was just a pest. I changed everything in here. And all it was was that silly little rotor arm. 15 thowels on the uh, point setting. Uh, condensers can go as well, but mine hasn't been a problem at all. The 15 thousand, you can actually set them to 16 thou, And then what happens is it starts to wear down to 15, 14 thou, which is ideal for the six-cylinder units. This white stuff you're seeing here is actually high-temperature grease, which I just sprayed on the manifold to protect the manifold from further corrosion and decay. Um, you also see with these very complex engines, the exhaust valve train setting is down there. You have to take the dipstick out <clears throat> first and then lever it out, drop your hose, and then you can drop that cover below and pull it up here, treat it to a nice cork seal, uh, and then set your tappets to what that label says. Uh, hot or cold on exhaust at um, uh, 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 one hundredth of an inch, and then the uh, inlets, which are very easy to do up here, uh, requires uh, six thou. And then also um, the settings uh, is a number thirteen or half inch wrench or spanner, and then your little screwdriver to set the timing, and and done. <clears throat> CD175 carburetor, only one of them. Um, dash pot oil, I don't change it very often. It sits quite nicely. One culprit is the diaphragm. Never change the spring on the diaphragm. Always keep the spring the same. And the diaphragm tends to pinch or break. Then there's your culprit as well. So other than that, no, everything else is solid. I'm going to put this in now. Hi. <coughs> Um, once you've got your uh, <clears throat> once you've got your ignition sorted, the next best thing to do is check the timing. I made marks on my pulley down there, and I set my timing by checking cylinder one, top dead center, dip distributor set on cylinder one rotor, which is over here, and then there's the fastening screw. You just adjust it a little bit to check your dwell, and then once your dwell set and your uh, you, you set your degrees of 
you said to degrees before top dead center per thousand feet of above mean sea level elevation so basically where I am is 150 feet above sea level it's really just above zero degrees before top dead center so that's where I've got the car set once you've done all that <clears throat> then you can start tuning your carburetor you tune with the, uh, the special tool which goes into the cap and you can set rich or lean if you set it clockwise or anti-clockwise then if you hear a chain uh, idling uh, it means that it's too uh, it's too uh, rich uh, it, uh, sorry it's too lean and you need to richen the mixture if the if you set if you blip the throttle and it doesn't make a difference it's 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 rich and then you lean it back to where it's lean is the point where it starts to struggle to get back up to idle again after you blip the accelerator the throttle um, the butterfly you know that's the simplest way to, to dial them in you just Blip it, blip it, blip it until you've reached the most leanest uh, um, mixture, and then you then you're done. And then of course you just set the idle where you want the idle to be, and and that's it. So listen. So that drop is the oil in the dash pot on the diaphragm. It's supposed to dampen it. And then if you come to the back and you listen to the exhaust, then that gives you an idea of what it should sound like. Okay. Now mine... Now mine sounds like that because it's it needs a run. And I've also got a little bit of two-stroke oil and dipethane in the fuel mixture. What that does is that makes the, that gives the, the, the engine half a chance of protecting its valve seals, stem seals and the exhaust seats. So that's my attempt at uh, lubricating the, the combustion chamber. And I also use, I don't use sem uh, fully synthetic, I use semi-synthetic standard 10w40 or 10w30 in this case with some mos2 molybdenum disulfide into the engine oil and i've put that through the drivetrain the steering box the, the diffs as well i've got mos2 with the ep90 gear oil and i've got engine oil with the with the mos2 in it as well from liquid molly and I also put lucas stop leak in the engine as well to give the piston rings a bit more compression and just to bring everything back to life Yes, but a little bit of two-stroke in the petrol doesn't doesn't harm um, about a cup, half a cup or two cups in a full tank is enough. And then I use the Dipethane Irish uh, fuel stabilizer from Halfords as well. 99 octane, 95 octane doesn't make a difference. You can use either or. I just try and stick with E5 rather than E10. I've got E5 in here now uh, and uh, running nicely. Thanks guys for watching. If you have any comments, uh, please put them down below and uh, enjoy, your, um, enjoy your Land Rover experience. Okay, here's a little look at the car. Still a lot of work to do on it. They painted it the wrong color, as you can see, that's the original. So that's what's gonna happen one day. Obviously I wanna fix the rims up first. There, get rid of these old manky chains on the tailgate to see if I can fix that up um, not every day you get to hear a six cylinder so I really want to look after this guy because she's special and very rare also I, I lock the diffs every time I go green laning to make sure that the joints, that the, the diffs stay lubricated. Apparently that's the only way they, they stay lubricated. Right, I'm gonna get going now. Thanks for watching.